I think you basically need three things to get started. And none of them have anything to do with your financial resources. I think you need to know why you're doing it. I think you need intention behind what you're doing. And I think you need to believe that you are worthy and you are capable of making something really awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today, I'm joined with a very special guest, Drew Hunt. She's a photographer in Columbus, Georgia. Um, she's a self-described chief encourager of humans. She's an all-around <laughs> great person. We're former co-workers. Um, and to kick things off, the first question I want to ask is, how has where you're from shaped the person you are today? Oh boy. Okay. So Tyler, how are you, friend? I'm so glad to be I here know. with you. I'm happy Today. to have you on. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I grew up in a, I'm a small town girl. Um, uh, I grew up in Pine Mountain, Georgia. And um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, a lot of community. My, my parents were from there. And there was very much this sense of um, comfort. And like I said, you know, everyone just, you know, kind of, we all took care of everyone else. And I think that that instilled that sense of the importance of community in me from a very early age. Uh, we were not put on this earth to do life by ourselves. Um, so I, I think that I saw that very early. So I think that that uh, is, is how it shaped me, um, into, you know, definitely plays a role in where I am now. So, um, to the listeners, can you describe like what Lilibet and Co is and what you do day to day? Sure. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you, uh, the, the Cliff's Notes version, Tyler. Um, a few years ago, I was in the corporate world and I was like this round peg trying to just squeeze myself into uh, a square hole. Sounds familiar. Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah. Some of you have been there. We, we know how that feels, right? Uh -huh. And I was just starved for some more artistic type creativity. And I'd never, you know, I, I was definitely more of an arts focused kid growing up. And I went the more practical route career wise. and. I just, that, that piece of me was just dying to come back out. And I finally, you know, about, I turned 30, became a mom and said, you know what? I can't, I can't push this down anymore. I have to let it out. So I started basically an, um, an Instagram page. It was the little bit social. And it was just a place where I could, you know, snap fun pictures with my iPhone um, and explore, you know, the, the process of like editing and, you know, I, you know, had, uh, the, um, Canva, um, graphic design app and, you know, playing around with, with text graphics. And so it was just a place for me to, to have that creative outlet it didn't cost anything. Um, and then, you know, that creative itch just kind of kept growing and that, uh, photography, bug was still in me. I've, I've always loved photography. I used to play around with my mom. She had a, a Canon Rebel um, when, when I was growing up. So I used to love to play around with it. And I thought about pursuing it at one point in college, you know, again, like, no, you know, let's be practical. Let's, you know, um, you know, go the more, you know, kind of business route, which is what I did. So, um, so anyway, I just, I got tired of, of saying no. And I finally, ran out of excuses. I ran out of reasons to keep saying no. And so I had a little bit in the little bit social and last summer, um, pandemic, you know, we're all kind of on lockdown and I'm trying to figure out how can I make the most of this time that I have. Now, granted, I have small children. So, you know, I had that going on. I had that to manage for sure, but I needed that outlet. I had to have it. Um, it was as necessary to me as breathing. So I said, you know what? I'm going to just give this a go. I 
you know, bought a camera and uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for so long. So I said, I'm going to start photography, um, like not just as a hobby, I'm going to get serious with it. Um, but also with that, you know, I, again, I, I still, I had this Instagram page and it had become like my personal journal really, where I was documenting the journey that I had been on for the last couple of years of, you know, giving myself permission to be creative and, um, you know, the process of raising my children at the same time, it was just my life. And, um, so yeah, it just kind of evolved into where I am now, which, um, again, you know, you go to my Instagram page now, it's, um, Lilibet and Co. Uh, I changed the code just to kind of umbrella, uh, the writing that I've been doing and also, uh, house the photography piece as well, if that makes sense. So Tyler, I share all of that with you just so your community knows, like we are multifaceted, you know, we are not just one singular thing. And that's something that I had to learn over the last couple of years. I have a ton of interests. You have a ton of interests. You have a ton of passions and gifts and, you know, just figuring out how that all works together and none of us are going to have the exact same path. It's going to be messy and it's going to be full of all this dimension. And that's what makes it fun. So um, yeah, a little bit and co, um, you know, I have a little bit uh, photography, a little bit and co-photography. Um, and then, like I said, I'm, I've really been exploring some, some writing too. I do a lot of blog writing um, and it's all very, um, I would say, personal development, self-development based. And again, it's, it, it all comes from the journey that I've been on of, you know, managing self-doubt and anxiety and perfectionism. And again, giving yourself permission to just explore who you were created to be and to live into that. So that was a really long answer. Oh, I have a lot to unpack there. Um, so let's see, I'm going to work, back, I'm, I'm going to work backwards. It's normally I'd say, you know, walk me through college and all that. Yeah. We'll get there. But um, I want to yeah. start, you know, we have, a, we have, we went down a similar path. We were working at the same company. And then yeah. um, I don't know if you had perceptions of me or, you know, I, I definitely didn't realize that you were so passionate about creativity and photography and, and expression. Yeah. And um, yeah. so can you think I of any other... Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, let's talk about that. Like, there is uh, something that we talk about a lot in the show is like, kind of like being put in a box. And mm -hmm. when you put on a certain uniform, that's just how people see you. But then yep. you're like, whoa, 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 like, I have this whole other like, yeah, interest inside to me. So can you talk yep. about like some examples of like, maybe times that you surprise other people or you like, people didn't realize that you know, you're at you know, quite as creative and, um, as you are, or, yeah, uh, you mean kind of like when, when we were in our, that, uh, corporate environment, uh, during, during that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like you said, I, I hit, I, I hit it well. Um, and I, I think that, you know, the, the, the job that I was in, um, <laughs> Uh, we, I had a, you know, very community facing position, um, but I also had my, I had my hands in, you know, we, we wore a lot of different hats there, like everybody does in any job. Um, so I would have my hands occasionally in uh, the event planning side of our organization. And to do that, you have to promote events, you have to come up with um, the uh, promotional piece of, you know, how um, a marketing blast is going to look and you know, things like that. And we had an in-house graphic designer and <laughs> she was so kind and so generous with me because I would come to her and I would say, okay, I have this idea rather than letting her do her job that she had been hired to do. And she was marvelous at it. I was like, okay, I've already sketched this out. I was thinking this font and this color matching and this, and well, you know, what do you think about this placement? And she's like, who are you? <laughs> Cause I have on this very like, you know, stiff gray, like business dress, and my heels and, you know, my coiffed hair, you know, I looked the, the part of the, you know, uh, business professional, 
Um, but there was this like bright, colorful, crazy side of me that I was hiding, you know, up under that gray suit, so to speak. And um, so I think that that surprised her at first. And, um, you know, she and I would riff on, you know, you know, different design tactics. And I don't have a design background at all. I just had a love for it. And, um, you know, an, an eye for what I knew I liked. And again, color has always spoken to me. And um, it just kind of grew from there a little bit. I think like she and I started talking and then she realized I had this little, you know, Instagram page where I was kind of secretly letting a little bit of my creativity out just a little bit at a time. It was very gradual. Um, and, you know, then just other conversations because I, I watched like, you know, your team, Tyler, uh, where you got to go out with the drones and, you know, the, the video equipment and you're doing all these crazy cool shoots. And I was just like dying at my desk every day, like trying to figure out how can I go shadow Tyler? How can I go follow him around? And, you know, people look at me like, why do you want to do that? What? That's, that's not your bag. I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea what's in here, what's in my heart. Um, so yeah, I think that um, it happened probably more in our office setting than I really let it out in the community. Um, you know, again, like kind of towards the end there, I, I stopped trying to, you know, just hide it and say, I'm a creative, <laughs> which by the way, we all are. Okay. Let's just, get that out there. Whenever somebody says, oh, I'm just not a creative person, that's not true. We were all wired to create. I feel like the word creativity kind of gets lumped into the very traditional, like I'm creative, therefore I'm a painter um, or a sculptor, or, you know, now it's, you know, digital media. Um, we're all creative. We all have, you know, something in us that is, um, you know, innovative and we want to be curious and we want to create and and, um, you know, bring this, we all, I think, have this like colorful world in our heads in some capacity, it looks different for everybody. But I think we all, you know, in some, in some way, we wanna let it, wanna let it out. Um, you know, whether you're an investment banker or, you know, again, you do paint for a living, it's, it's in all of us somehow. So, so anyway, um, it's just a matter of, you know, how does it come out and, when and do you let it? I feel like when we're children, it's encouraged. And then you kind of reach that those adulting years and, you know, you're told to, oh, let's, you know, put this aside. And um, let's talk about that you know. for a second. You, you yeah. mentioned that you were artistic as a kid. Uh, what were some of the, your yeah. early, like, how were you in what ways, like what kind of projects were you working on or what sort yeah. of things were you attracted to? Um, I love to write poetry as a kid. Uh, it just, it just came out of me. I didn't even, I didn't even try. And it would come out of me so fast. A lot of times my mom always told this story. She's like, I, I knew that there was some kind of writing, you know, uh, a, a talent or something in you. You were like seven years old. And she said, we're coming home from school and you're like beating the door down. Mom, I, I have to get to my desk. I have a, I have um, a, a poem in my head. And she said, I couldn't get the door open fast enough. You were just, and you would do things like that a lot. And um, she said, it was around that age. I really started to, to see that grow in you. And um, yeah, I wrote poetry for a long time. And then again, you know, I start to get into the college years and just kind of, oh, I don't have time for this anymore. You know, time to be an adult, stamp it out. Uh, but I love to paint as well. And actually when I was in high school, um, I uh, had these little, you know, vignette paintings that I did of you know little landscapes and even people I had these like really colorful like cartoon like ladies that I painted <laughs> and sold in coffee shops wow. as, a, as a high schooler yeah so um you know it, it I my my dad and my mom are both very artistic uh they're great painters um and uh so I kind of you know grew up around that. Um, they didn't, neither of them, um, well, my, my mother didn't do that as a profession. My family, uh, my dad's side of the family owned a commercial sign company. So I grew up, you know, kind of running around the sign shop and, you know, they'd let me go in there and grab a piece of wood and, you know, paint on it, play around. Um, and that was great. And, you know, I, 
you know, was, I think, like I said, destined more for that path, but I did what I think a lot of us do is, um, you know, kind of trace this straight and narrow and uh, anyway, so well, it's found its way back out. Running the straight and narrow is, is it doesn't, wanting to pursue the creative things doesn't invalidate the time you and I have both spent in the corporate world, learning, Absolutely. learning the foundations of yeah. business and team building and relationships and just organization mm -hmm. and, and how mm -hmm. an organization is structured. And a lot of artists that go to art school end up lacking in those areas and they, they love their art. They're really good at their mm -hmm. art, but they don't know how to do the business to side do of with things. it. Right. Yes. So, yes, yes. so, so we need to, yeah. like, you know, not all of us, but like the fact that you and I did go that route for a long time, it, it's, it's, it's going to be the foundation upon which we build our, yeah. our creative careers. And so far, right. that's, right. you know, it's worked out for me. And I'm glad you said that I wouldn't change the way anything has happened. Um, because I mean, like you said, you know, I have this foundation for understanding how to run a business, which is important. You, you have to eat, <laughs> right? Um, you have to know how to, to do that. Um, and like you said, the team building, the networking, that's mm -hmm. crucial. Mm -hmm. um, again, it goes back to community. You know, we're, we're not designed to do this alone. Even if you, you know, have a neighbor who is a professional artist out of her home. Well, she sells her work around the country. like. Do you think she's just doing that all alone all by herself? No, it's it's a community of people that she's, this network that she's built. Um, she never has to leave her home, but she has a network that she's working with and it, it's, it's fantastic. So, um, and I think I appreciate where I am even more now because of where I've been. And I know how it feels to not be fully living into to who I am. And, and you know, please understand, I don't think that you have to, if, if you have this, you know, creative energy inside of you, but you're a nurse by day, if you love being a nurse too, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, if, again, if you're an attorney by day, but you really are into pottery, you can, you can do both. If, if that, if that works for you, um, you know, creativity, you it doesn't have to be. Huh? What's that? You, you should do your nine to five until you can't anymore. Meaning, Absolutely. Meaning like Absolutely. you get to a point when you're like, oh, mm -hmm. this pottery thing is bigger yeah. than, you know, right. my, my main, yeah. my main thing. So like, I have to right. go that way because it's Absolutely. just calling me kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And we all, you know, think pretty much everyone has to do that. It's just, um, you know, it's just, again, giving yourself permission to do it in some capacity, whatever that is, if it's two hours on the weekend, that is going to give you this sense of fulfillment and it's going to let you feel like you have a little bit of say over your life too, because that's something that I, that I definitely struggled with for a long time. Um, you know, I was in the corporate world and I was all business and that was it. And, um, you know, that's not, I don't, I don't know why I made that rule for myself. You know, I spent my, my downtime, if it wasn't, you know, serving on a, a board of some sort, then, you know, I, I, you know, my writing, for example, like I didn't, I didn't understand that there was a place for it. I could still do it on the weekends and at night and whenever, um, you know, I had that downtime. So. Was there a moment or a series of moments where you had this realization, which is like, oh, I can do that. And really the only thing that was stopping me was, was me. Me. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, Yes, I did. Um, and it, it happened in layers, if that makes sense. Um, it, you know, there it was, again, it's been a journey. Um, I think kind of the first step of that was, like I said, I, uh, you know, gotten into my early 30s. I'd just become a mom. And I have this, you know, awesome little baby girl. And you, you look at your child and you're like, gosh, I just see the whole world in front of you. And I have all these hopes and dreams for this little girl that are hers, not mine. You know, I want her to have her own. But then it, did, it didn't start to kind of put the magnifying glass in front of me. And well, what example am I setting for her? Um, I want her to go after whatever it is that she loves, whatever she was put here to do. But am I showing her how to do that? And I wasn't. So that was a big aha moment for me. The light bulb kind of came on the first time 
uh, she was probably six months old. Um, and it was a, it was a podcast episode, truthfully. Um, it was, uh, it was, a um, Jenna Kutcher, the gold digger podcast. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but it was of one it, of yeah. her episodes. Yeah. That was just like, bam. <laughs> <laughs> and I was awake, you know, um, and then it grew from there. You know, like I said, it, it just, it's, it's been a, a very layered uh, journey of a thousand steps. Um, but then, you know, last year, uh, I remember I wrote it down in my journal. I'm a, I'm a big journal writer. I write my journal every morning um, as part of my daily routine. And I had been wrestling with this, you know, idea of photography uh, for two years, like seriously, like really getting into it as, um, you know, more than just a hobby. And it had just been, I, I know you can probably relate Tyler. It had just kind of been following me. It just, it kept popping up in podcast episodes. It kept popping up in conversations. Um, and I think when that happens, you need to pay attention. Um, so I'd been wrestling with it and I'd, you know, found reasons not to do it. And I just, I, I, I realized what I was doing to myself. I was operating from a place of fear and that was, I couldn't do that anymore. Again, what example, it all goes back to what example am I setting, um, you know, for my daughter, what am I, uh, am I being true to who I am? And, um, yeah, I just had this, again, it was like another light bulb moment. Um, in June last year, it was like, this is where you need to start. Cause I've been wrestling with, okay, I know I want something to be different. I know that I, there's more inside of me that needs to come out. Where do I start? What do I do? You know, that was overwhelming. And uh, I got in my own way about that for a while. And so finally I had to, you, you, you just have to start. You have to just make a decision. Where you start doesn't have to, and it's not going to be uh, the same place that you're in six months from then, a year from then. You can speak to that, I know. Um, so so, yeah, I mean, just because, you know, you start with, for example, if photography is your thing or if floral arranging is your thing um, for the time being, like that's where I can start in that moment and know that it's probably going to grow into something else. Because I was so worried about, uh, oh, well, if I start photography and, you know, I, I get involved in that, you know, what about this writing thing over here? What about this other stuff that I like to do? It will come. It will come. Their seeds. Uh, so just start exactly a million little seeds. Just start somewhere. Yep. Yeah. This episode of the Creative Truth is sponsored by Colas Modern, a family owned art and design studio focused on producing contemporary furniture and home decor based right here in Savannah, Georgia. The company is owned by David and Lara Colas. David is a former podcast guest. So if you haven't listened to that one, go check it out. All of their furniture and home goods are designed and manufactured right here in Savannah, Georgia, handmade, uh, including this coffee table, which is like an absolute favorite of mine. So if you're looking for a personal gift with a story behind it, you can check out some of their unique cutting boards, so like their butler board, their cleaver board, or their fruit board, and more. You can follow them on Instagram at shopmodernheritage or find them online at shopmodernheritage.com. That's on Instagram at shopmodernheritage or online at shopmodernheritage.com. Heritage.com. Yeah, and mine have some have grown and some are wiltered. <laughs> but yeah. but then you but then you, okay. you move on. You go, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna exactly. do that anymore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You don't get hung up on that. I'm glad you said that. Uh because it, it's so true. Um, like I, I mentioned earlier, you know, this is a this is a journey. Um, it it is not a linear path. It's going to take ups and downs and twists and turns, and you know, sometimes you're gonna, you know, take three steps sideways. Um, but just enjoy, you know, this process, um, you, you know, you hear that throwaway phase or throwaway phrase. It's, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. But once I started taking those steps, I realized just how true it is. It's so much fun. Um, you know, you don't need to have it all completely mapped out. Um, yeah. So just, you know, take that, that first step and, and know that it's going to be messy and some things are going to stick and some are not. And so what you tried, you know, at least, you know, <laughs> so let's bring it back again. And, um, you know, for, you know, my listeners know that I, you know, was thinking about going for film, moving to LA, doing that whole thing. Yeah. And then it, I didn't actually leave home till I was 27. So it took, I knew, I always knew I wanted to leave, but it took until I was 27. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. But for you, when you were 17, 18, a, a junior in high school, a senior in high school, you're looking at college, you're looking at what you want to do for the rest of your life, which again is a fallacy. Um, <laughs> what, totally. like, what, were you, what were you thinking you might do? And then what did you end up doing? Well, uh, or were you completely uncertain? Okay, so that that is um, an interesting answer that I have had to uh, kind of start to own recently. Um, so, in addition to loving to, uh, to you know write and paint, I was a theater kid. Um, I took ballet. I started when I was two, and theater, being on the stage, performing, that was my ultimate passion. And I thought that's what I was going to do. And I had a few opportunities. I had a couple of particular opportunities because like you, I was either wanting to go to New York to the stage or go out West uh, to LA to uh, the screen. And I had a couple of opportunities. Uh, I had a scholarship opportunity that fell through and then I had a, a connection, someone uh, that could connect me out in LA. And uh, yeah, that <laughs> he, the connection that I had, he suddenly passed away. Like, yeah. And that really kind of shook me a little bit. And I was like, oh, you know, I was very 17 year old me. I was very much one that believed in signs. Like that's a sign I'm not supposed to do that. That's it. I, that's not for me. And I don't really believe that. So much anymore. Um, I think that sometimes when a door closes, that means you need to crawl through the window. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, but at the time, I uh, sh you know kind of shut it down and I said, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go to college. Um, that's really kind of more of what my family wanted me to do. You know, it was safe. Uh, so I, my mother was a nurse. So I said, well, I'm going to go to school to be a nurse because that's Safe and I'll always have a job, you know, <laughs> you know, you'll always have a job. Uh, so that's what I did. And um, I just, you know, went through myself into science. And I mean, talking about that now feels like an out of body experience. Like, I, I can't believe I did that because it was so against the grain of who I really was. Um, but again, you know, if you give into um, it, if you give into, to that self-doubt, uh, you know, it can, it can take you in a place where you wake up one day and you don't recognize yourself. Um, so anyway, yeah, I headed off to college, uh, with the intention of going into healthcare <laughs> actually. Um, and then I got there and, you know, went through a couple years of major courses or yeah, my, my undergrad stuff. And, um, I just, after anatomies and biologies and chemistries, I just said, no, this is, this is not right. So um, yeah, I wound up with a business degree um, and then, you know, went on that track for a decade, like we talked about. During that time, but, oh, go ahead. No, go. Oh, I, I was, I was pretty much done. That was, you, you didn't see that coming, did you? No, I actually knew you were, you were studying nursing. I remember talking about that. Oh, but, but yeah, but before that, like what, what my passion really was and what I really thought I was going to do. <laughs> um, yeah. So, well, I mean, interesting, you know, like we talked about, it's never too, it's never too late. And I have things that like I might want to do down the road, but I'm not quite there yet. It's not the right time for me either. During, yeah. during your time when you were in that kind of out of body experience and you were doing Si like you were studying nursing, you were doing biology and scientific courses. Were you still have, did you still have creative outlets? Were you still doing creative things on the side or were you just like completely out of it? You know, I, I was a little bit. Um, I, again, I couldn't, I, I couldn't help it. Um, I mentioned I painted um, in high school and I sold some of my work then. So um, I actually, for a, a little bit of time, got back into doing that while I was in college and all of my friends were in sororities. So I started creating these like custom little, it's almost like, again, colorful uh, painted ladies is what I called them. 
And so um, the sorority sisters would order them for their little sister in the sorority as like a gift. And so I would do like a painting, like if she had dark hair, I'd paint her with dark hair and her sorority t-shirt and it would have, you know, some kind of colorful background. And so I did a lot of that. Um, and I also just did some, you know, general ones that I sold in the coffee shops in the town where I went to school. So it was still there. Um, and, um, and I was, I remember um, I discovered a photographer in Savannah who's, who's pretty well known, Christine Hall. Um, she's like a photojournalist type photographer. I discovered her work too in college and became really captivated by what she was doing. I'd never you know, seen anybody quite like that before. And so I kind of dabbled a little bit and I had like a, it was like a Nikon little play camera that I would play around with um, in school as well. Um, again, just very off the, off the radar, you know, um, just having fun with it. But you, you look back and you see clues, you know, you see the evidence was there of who I was and what I was supposed to be doing. I'm, now I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> there it was. <laughs> yeah, the, so, all, the little, yeah. all the little hints when you look back, they all yeah. lead you to where you are. But when you're like, when we look forward, it's so much harder to predict. Um, oh, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's talk about, um, do you ever think it's like too late to evolve and to reimagine your dream? absolutely not it is never too late and this is something that I feel so passionate about and and I honestly feel like this is a message that I'm like being called to carry because I first of all I've walked it myself and I cannot tell you how many conversations I have found myself in I'll give you an example I had a, I was having a conversation with a college friend of mine uh, last weekend She's a pharmacist and brilliant. And I went through college with her. I watched her go through these classes. She nailed every one of them, I just soared through the program. And we're having a conversation 15 years later. And she says, I never wanted to be a pharmacist. I, I don't, I want to own my own small business. Like I love marketing. <laughs> my mind was blown. She's like, I really want to get into digital marketing. I'm like, what? I had no idea. She's 35 and she's starting to, to, to chase that path. My thing is the time is going to pass anyway. So what would you rather do? Would you rather be in the stand watching everybody else on the field playing, doing what you want to do? Or would you rather be in the game? Because I'll tell you, being in the game is so much more fun been sitting and watching. Um, so no, I, I don't think you're ever too old. It's, it's never too late to start something that matters. Um, when you're 90 and you're looking back over, the, over your life and the things that you've done, what are you going to regret not having done? Because I'll tell you that that's one of the things that, that kept me standing still for so long was the fear of what if I fail? What if I attempt to go after you know, a photography career and, you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work out, you know, for whatever, you know, hundred reasons I could come up with as to why it might not work out. So what, you know, would I, would I rather always wonder or would I rather try it and know for sure, either that was for me or it wasn't. Um, I don't have to, I don't have to wonder. And what if it does work out? What if it does work out? I mean, you know, like how fantastic could that be? So I don't think that, you know, again, we're, we're, we're obsessed with, with youth in our culture and that if you don't start when you're 18, and like you said, if you don't have your life figured out at 18, then there's something wrong. I think, you know, uh, it's kind of the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, how, how could you You're possibly not supposed know? To have it. No, the world is so big. And mm -hmm. most of us have sampled nothing of it at 18. You know, um, I, again, I do think that you have those core things inside of you that, that light you up, that drive you. It's the stuff that comes out of you without trying. It's the stuff that you would do if you weren't getting paid for it. Like, again, 
me playing around with poetry and photography and painting. Um, those were just things that I loved to do. And, you know, it's, it's never too late to get back to the essence of who you are. There's always time for that. Um, something you and I also both share is we're not solely focused on our craft. We're both very interested in kind of spreading the good word of, of this. You, you know, you yes. called yourself the keep chief encourager of humans. Um, yes. Like, why do you have this like desire to actually spread this kind of, you know, not knowledge, but just words of encouragement, I guess, to people? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, because uh, first of all, I, I have, you know, lived it myself. Um, I know how it feels to, you know, again, try to be that round peg going into the, to the square hole. Um, and that feeling to me was so just, it was just kind of suffocating. And I love people. I love humans. I think this life that we have, it's imperfect, but it's beautiful. And I want everyone to experience that. I want, I want everyone to know um, that they too can chase a dream that, that they have. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I was a theater kid. I thought that I was going to uh, become an actor and I chose this different path. And I thought, okay, well, I didn't say yes to this at 18. So that means I'm done. Uh, no, I think actually I went back, you know, recently and revisited why did I want to be an actor? What was that that was interesting to me? It was about storytelling. It was about making people feel something. Well, I realized I can still do that. I can still do that now. I don't have to be on a silver screen in Hollywood to still carry out that thing and live into that thing that I love and serve people in the way that, uh, that I feel I can serve them. And, you know, um, part of, to answer your, your question about that, you know, the other reason, why do I want to you know share this message um i feel that that's just one of the things that i was put on this earth to do to to share that message i think we're all here to help each other again it goes back to community um i think that we every one of our struggles uh you know every um you know success that that we have uh that we've had um we all are learning from each other and, and I think that, you know, anything that, that I have experienced, um, you know, I, again, it, it started small with conversations with, you know, coworkers around the office about, yeah, you know, I really wanted to, to do this other thing and, and, but I didn't. And, you know, what, what do I do about that now? And it just, it, those kind of conversations just light something in me. I get this feeling right here, like I could just take flight. <laughs> and I think that when you feel that feeling, you know what it is, it's undeniable, pay attention to it and step into it. Um, you know, so um, like I said, it's just, it, it's personal that I've, I've walked it and I feel that it, it's part of my calling. I feel it's part of what God put me here to do. Um, I think we're all here, you know, for, for uh, I think we all have a divine assignment. Um, and again, everybody's is as unique as we are. No two people are the same. No two assignments are the same, but it all works together, I think. And it's a moving target, sense. you know, it's like, oh, yeah, 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 it changes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk community for a second. Is your tribe, yeah. is your community, the people that you surround yourself with, are they supportive when they see this shining, glimmering Drew that's coming out of the gray suit? Are they like? supportive of that like yeah go get it let's start this photography company like let's go I love this yes I have been absolutely blown away by the community that that I have um I don't have you know the the little bit co community it's not like a million you know members or anything like that but man it is a fierce fiercely just supportive uh, and, and my community is mostly women, um, which just kind of means even more to me because I have certainly um, experienced, uh, you know, that culture where, yeah, I didn't quite have that support. I know what that feels like. 
I've seen it happen to others. I hope I haven't been a contributor of it, although at some point in my life, perhaps I was, but, but to see women support other women, there is, to me, I mean, I, I, I can't think of anything that is, is more um, just empowering than when we stick together. I think we all need each other. I don't, and I, I don't subscribe to the, let's kick men to the side, let's push men down to lift women up. I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, I think again, you know, I very much believe in rising tides, uh, lifts all boats, but uh, women, you know, we, we need each other. There, there is no room and no reason for anything less than that. There's room at the table for everybody. So yeah, every, everything that, um, that I have any transformation that I've been through the little bit co community has been incredibly supportive. And, you know, that, that means more than anything, you know, um, but, you know, if, if they, if someone has an opinion that's different, I want to hear about that too. You know, I am not out here um, sharing my message because I want everybody to agree with me. I, although I hope what I'm putting out is, is making a positive impact um, and encouraging people and making them feel like they can go achieve anything. Uh, I like to surround myself with people who think differently than I do and who live differently than I do. You know, I, I don't need 10 carbon copies of this. Ah, no, <laughs> you know, um, so, so anyway, I, I haven't, you know, run into any major opposition. Um, but, but if I do, that's okay too, you know? Um, but yeah, I love seeing women supporting other women. Um, cause again, like you said, we're all on this journey. It's, you know, just shifting and changing all the time and evolving and that's how it should be. Yep. How so. about, how about geographically coping with moving to a new community? Cause you, you just not too long ago <laughs> moved to Columbus. Mm -hmm. And do you mm -hmm. have family, friends there, connections? We do. Yes, we do. Our whole family uh, is, for the most part, here or within like, you know, a couple of hours here. But all the grandparents are here. Most of our siblings are here. Um, so, yeah, um, it's it's been an interesting, um, you know, year, year and a half. We were uh, in Atlanta briefly after we, we were in Savannah for a decade. We went to Atlanta. Um, we were thrilled to be in a big city. That was our plan. We were going to stay and we were in the heart of the city. And we loved it. And we moved there three weeks before shelter in place happened. So that was interesting. Um, we have, we had two little ones at the time. A few months later, we found out we were having two more. So we were about to have four children under four. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, hold the phone. Well, Maybe being in the city does not make so yeah. much sense for now. Uh, so yeah, uh, my parents, my husband's parents, um, they were all in Columbus. And so we start talking about, you know, we need more square footage. Where are we going? What are we going to do? And moving to a suburb and having the same distance of a commute for my husband, just, we said, why would we do that? when we can go to Columbus and he commutes twice a week now, his company allowed him to do that, which we're profoundly grateful for. Um, and that's cool. Um, so yeah, well, let's go down there where we have family support and, you know, the children can, you know, be with their cousins and with their grandparents often, uh, because we didn't have that, um, in Savannah, we didn't have any family there. Um, and, uh, so that is nice to, to have that impact. Uh, we would not have been able to do or I don't know how we would have done the last few months if we didn't have the family around us that we had, the support system that we had. And um, so, yeah, that was that was the driving factor for us coming back was was family, you know, and it's, well, it's been a blessing. It's another perfect example of like, let's go to Atlanta. Let's try it out. And then, yeah. you know, if yeah. like if something else yeah. comes up, we'll do that. We're not moving. We're not right. moving there like to, you know, we have to stay there the rest this of our it. lives. It's like, this go, is it. exactly. go, go try yeah. it and then see, you know, yeah. see if it's working. So, and that's how we operate until it makes, until it no longer makes sense. We'll do it as long as it does make sense. And that's the attitude that we went into Atlanta with was, um, you know, we're going to do this as long as it makes sense. And we were excited about it. And, and I think, you know, if we, I don't know, 
if we would have stayed, wouldn't have stayed given the circumstances, yeah, it's water under the bridge at this point. You know, life is what it is now and it's mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, we could have never predicted that. We could have never predicted, you know, uh, the, <laughs> the other, you know, pandemic situation that happened either. Um, but, you know, we, we made it work and we, we did what was right for us. We, we didn't stop and, you know, we analyzed plenty of things, but uh, we didn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about well, what are other people going to think? Is this going to look crazy <laughs> uh, from the outside? Just does this make sense for our family uh, right now? And like you said, you know, you can, you can always pivot. Nothing is, nothing is, is forever. So. So if they invented a cell phone or if they invented a phone that allows you to leave a voicemail to yourself at 17 year olds old, uh, what would you say in 60 seconds? Oh, 17 year old little Drew, just first of all, friend, know that it's all going to work out. It's all going to work out the way that it's supposed to. And you are beautiful and you are worthy and you are enough and you have more inside of you than you realize and do not waste time on worrying about doing it perfectly or if it's if it's if it's not going to work out just get out there get in the game live life be kind show love have some fun and it's, it's all going to, it's all going to work out. How can I have been a little under 60 seconds? <laughs> oh no, that's perfect. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it. I've had, I've had the whole gamut of responses from that one. Um, let's see. So how can people oh, sure. learn more about you and, and follow on your journey? And uh, this is your chance to basically plug <laughs> whatever you're working sure. on. Sure. Sure. So, um, you can find me at lilibitandco.com. Uh, that's it's principally my photography website. I do have uh, a blog section on there that I've been pouring into a little more. Um, the open journal is where I've been spending a lot of time. That's um, basically everything that I was putting on Instagram for so long. It kind of became too long for the gram. So I had to find another home for it. So uh, yeah, lilibitandco.com. Uh, the open journal is where I have a lot of my kind of faith-based personal development writings. Um, and then I'm, I'm all over the Instagram. That's where I spend most of my time as far as social media goes. Um, but it's a uh, little bit in co and, uh, and is spelled out of course. And uh, yeah, that's where, that's where you can find me. So, you know, shoot me a DM. I try, I, I love responding to DMs. I love responding to comments. Um, I feel like that's how you can really, that's how you build that community, you know? Um, and, uh, so, you know, shoot me a message and, and I'll, I'll respond to you. I love, I love chatting. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me. Uh, any other closing words of advice or uh, wisdom for the listeners? Um, sorry, my light just, oh, what happened? My light just turned off the, sorry, there I'm like is. in the dark over here. <laughs> okay. Um, any, any words of advice, you know, I, I want our creative folks to know those that are, that are pursuing a creative career, creative side hustle. I want you to know how much value you have to bring. I don't care what your industry is. I don't care what your focus is. And if you think that it's been done before, it has not been done by you, period. You have something unique, your personality, your spirit, your experiences, all mixed together in this beautiful like cocktail of greatness that the world needs. So please don't hold it back. Please get out there and just go all in on whatever your dream is, whatever, whatever that is inside of you that needs to come out or you're, you know, maybe you've already started, but you know, we all have self-doubt. We all have that imposter syndrome of, do I really belong here? Is this really, you know, uh, yes, you do. There's room at the table for everybody and we need you. 
So, um, so yeah, get out there and just live into your beautiful self and the world is going to be better because of it. So. Wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. So uh, I can keep going, but I'll stop. Uh, no, I appreciate you. This has been <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. And the thing is like, we could, you know, down the road, we could do another one, you know, if, if the listeners have questions. Oh man. You know, we'll, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll oh gosh. Those. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want, can I, can I add one more thing to Please. that? Because yeah. this is another thing that I, that I struggle with and I don't know if you have a space for this, but we talked about, you know, kind of our overarching um, topic today was take, taking that leap of faith. And I, hesitated for a long time because I thought I needed, you know, all this experience. I thought I needed money. I thought I needed, you know, a fancy website and fancy gear and, and all of this. I think you basically need three things to get started. And none of them have anything to do with your financial resources. I think you need to know why you're doing it. I think you need intention behind what you're doing. And I think you need to believe that you are worthy and you are capable of making something really awesome happen. And I struggled with that last part. I struggled with the, the belief that I could make change happen. So what I always tell everybody is, if you're struggling with that belief, come hang out with me for a minute. I'll, I'll let you borrow mine. I will believe in you so much until you feel like you have that yourself. Um, but I think confidence comes from doing, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to build that confidence when you get out there and you just start doing it. And again, it's, it's going to be messy. It's not going to be perfect. You should look back at what you created a year from now and cringe just a little bit, Oh yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. But that's okay. That's absolutely, that's how it's supposed to be. Um, nobody, nobody comes here with all the answers again, that would, where's the fun in that? So if you're looking so anyway, back, and, I will leave it at that. If you're looking back and you're like, oh, that was so good, then you're not growing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely true. And that's ultimately that's where all the fun lives is in that in that growth part. So for sure. Yeah, so. I'll leave it there. Well, in upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to creative success. If you have episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at hello at creative-truth.com. If you have questions for Drew, you can reach her at Lilibet & Co. on Instagram or her website. You can also drop it as a comment. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on iTunes, please leave me a good review. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I appreciate everyone listening. Drew, I appreciate you coming on the show. Long time coming. Oh, and I'm, I'm glad yep. that uh, we finally made it happen. I'm so glad. Thank you again for having me, Tyler. I love what you're doing. I'm so proud of you. Keep it up. Thank you. <laughs>